This is a very difficult time for a Major League Baseball broadcaster or for a professional baseball announcer throughout the minor leagues, or it's also a difficult time for you if you're an aspiring baseball broadcaster because things are kind of at a standstill right now, and baseball broadcasters don't know what the immediate future is going to hold. So what can you do as a baseball broadcaster to improve during a lockout? Let's talk about it. Welcome to the Sportscasters Club Radio Show, where it's all about becoming a better sportscaster and a better sports fan. And now, your host, a man who has trained sportscasters at Marist College, the Connecticut School of Broadcasting, and Fordham University's WFUV Radio, Rick Schultz. Welcome back to the show. I'm Rick Schultz. Thanks for joining us today. This is a difficult broadcast to have. It's a it's a broadcast that I know brings up so many emotions in those of you that follow us here at Sportscasters Club because listen, let's be honest, right now baseball is in a state of of confusion for a lot of people. It's at a standstill. It's at a very difficult time and I know those of you listening, you're probably experiencing Many different emotions, anger, frustration, confusion, disappointment. You're wondering when the players and the owners are going to come together and make an agreement. You're wondering if spring training is going to start in a week like it's supposed to. You're wondering so many things and you're wondering how's this going to impact my career. Because across the country, baseball broadcasters, this is the time when you gear up and you're getting ready, and you're getting excited, and your new season is just about to begin. Whether you are a seasoned broadcaster returning to your club, whether you're a broadcaster in a new position getting ready for a season at a new level, whether you're a, a college or a high school aspiring sportscaster looking to, looking to better yourself this year, looking forward to the season, looking to improve, this is the time of year where hope springs eternal, not only for for teams, for ball clubs, but also for aspiring broadcasters. And I know it because I lived it so many years, going back to my earliest days as an 18-year-old broadcasting professional baseball. It was an exciting time, and I remember the summer of 1994, my first year broadcasting professional baseball, and I remember sitting on a bus on the way home from a road trip. The manager and his coaching staff sat right in front of me. I sat in usually in the second or third row, and the manager sat in the first row, and his coaches sat in the, the second row as well, second and third row. So I was always right there near the, the brain trust of the team. And I recall vividly in the, the summer of 1994 when baseball was going through a, a similar time, And I remember the coach on that team, he had a cell phone, one of these big clunky cell phones, if memory serves. It was one of those, you know, it looked like like, uh, the ones you would see in the movies, you know, with the nuclear codes, like the football. It was like a mini suitcase (laughs) where you picked up the the receiver and it had a cord and you dialed the numbers. And I can remember the coach, he, he was up at the front of the bus on his cell phone and he put the cell phone down, he hung up. And he took a few steps back to the second row and he looked up at us and he said, we're out. And that was when the 1994 labor impasse began. That was the day. And I can recall and everything changed. And as you can remember, 1994, the year that did not have a World Series, a terrible, a terrible thing for Major League Baseball. But we're in a similar situation now. So the question is, how can a broadcaster improve? How can a baseball broadcaster improve amid this confusion and this tumultuous time in baseball? There are three distinct ways that I think you can improve right now. You don't have to wait until next week, until tomorrow, 
until the owners and players get things back together. You can improve right now if you work on these three things, and we're going to talk about them next. If you're enjoying the show, check out our seven-hour online sports broadcasting course. We cover play-by-play, talk show hosting, television, and much more. Visit sportscastersclub.com and click on online sportscasting class. All right. So if you're an aspiring baseball broadcaster, right now baseball is at an impasse. The owners and players can't come to an agreement. One of the latest words is that the owners requested a mediator and the players said go pound sand. So as of right now, things are still at a standstill. So how is a broadcaster supposed to improve? All right, here's number one. If you are an aspiring baseball broadcaster and you know that a lot of the people we deal with are across the professional ranks, but more and more they're in college and they're in high school and they're aspiring sportscasters. So how can you improve right now? The number one thing you can do, these aren't in any order, but the number one thing on my list here today is right now you can improve your career trajectory by networking. Networking. Now you might be saying that's something I can do all the time. Yes, it is. It certainly is. But think about the past five minutes, about the different things I was discussing. The fact that there's confusion, there's turmoil, there is indecision, there's worry, there's anxiety across the Major League Baseball world, of course. But anyone who's aspiring to become a baseball broadcaster, there's just so much uncertainty right now. And that is an area on which you can connect with other people in similar situations. So if you're a high school student looking to become an aspiring sportscaster, looking to build a career, maybe it's someone at the level you're you're searching to arrive at. Maybe it's someone you can reach out to there and and find out what what they're thinking about the current state of affairs. Because it's something you can have in common. It's a bond that you can have. Not a good one. Nobody's enjoying baseball right now being in a state of of flux, of indecision. Nobody knows what tomorrow is going to bring or if opening day is going to happen as it should. But it's a common ground that you can reach out to other broadcasters and find out how they're feeling about it because it immediately builds a bond from you to them. Now, we talk all, all the time about networking, and that's one of the real things we focus on at Sportscasters Club And we talk about how to do that, not only today, but to build your career for weeks, months, and years into the future. It's one of the real keys to building a strong, successful broadcasting career. But that's one of the things you can do right now. You can reach out to other people in your situation. You can also reach out to people who maybe are not yet at your level. Because we've talked all the time about how successful, proven, professional broadcasters more times than not, want to help the next generation and want to reach out and and be a, a support and a guiding light for those people coming up behind. And that's one of the great things I enjoyed about Fordham University when I was the sports director there at WFUV. It, it, it was, number one, the, the legacy of people that had gone before, but it was also those same people reaching down and giving a hand up to the people who were coming up behind them. And so that was one of the great things that made and still makes WFUV special. And it's one of the things that I think is truly special about the the broadcasting industry, whether it be in baseball or in other sports. I mean, when I was broadcasting Army basketball, I felt something pretty similar across the different teams and the league. It was the Patriot League at the time. And so you got to know the broadcasters and you got to talk to them and, and get to know them as people. And it was a, a community. So whether it was a guy like Bob Sosi now broadcasting for the Patriots in the NFL, or whether it was meeting people and communicating and chatting with people like John Feinstein, who would help out on, on Navy games, or at, in fact, he was actually writing a book that year. But you build a community, and that's how you grow your career to the next level when you're looking a year, five years, ten years down the road. So the number one thing you can do as a broadcaster, one of the things, one of the top three right now to improve is network, because that is going to be something that's going to benefit you even when you don't even know how. It's going to benefit you down the road. 
So number one is networking, and we're going to touch on the number two thing you can do to improve right now during the lockout when we come back. Are you enjoying the Sportscasters Club online radio show? If so, please hit the subscribe button so you'll never miss an episode. When we release each new show, you'll be the first to know. So hit the subscribe button in your podcast app today, and we'll keep the awesome, cool, entertaining, and informative material coming. All right, welcome back to the Sportscasters Club online radio show. I am Rick Schultz. We're talking about the Major League Baseball lockout, and we're talking about how aspiring baseball broadcasters can improve. We talked about networking. Here's the number two thing you can do. Practice your skills. Now that one should be pretty obvious. Practice your skills. The first thing that some people are probably saying right now is, how can I practice my skills? I live in the Northeast, and there's a foot of snow on the ground. Well, that might be true. It might not be as, as simple as going outside and broadcasting a baseball game if you live in a better climate. But you can definitely improve. How do you think broadcasters have improved for years and years? Well, there's a lot of different ways. Number one, you could watch a video of a baseball game and do play-by-play as you watch it on your device. That's one way. How about this? Another way is you can do play-by-play of the room you're in. And this is something that we've talked about at Sportscasters Club before. This was something that Marty Glickman really brought to us as students when we would sit with him every week in the 1990s at WFUV at Fordham in New York City. And Marty would say, sit in your dorm room and do play-by-play of what you see. Describe the walls. Describe the television on the right side. Describe the bookshelf and your desk and your bed. Describe the colors. Describe the sights, the sounds, the smells. Descriptive terminology and practice. And so that's what we would do. We would practice doing play-by-play of our dorm room. And at the time, my roommate was not a sports guy at all. He He was an actor. He was an actor. And so... Imagine what he thought one day when he came in and I was doing play-by-play of our dorm room. He probably thought I had gone off my rocker. (laughs) And maybe I had, who knows. But that was one way to improve in February for a broadcast I was going to do in May because it was a way to work on my skills. Another, Another angle of this is something that Marty would talk about was doing play-by-play while you're driving. And this was back before cell phones. So... You did not often talk to anyone if you were alone in the car. But Marty said, do play-by-play of what you're seeing. Describe the green trees on the left side. Describe the yellow home on the right side with a black roof and smoke trickling out the top of the chimney. Or describe uh, the red car speeding past you on the right side, weaving back towards the left and making a left-hand turn at the yellow turn signal. Whatever it is, describe, 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 because that just trains your, your mind to work in connection with your mouth. It trains you how to be descriptive. It trains you how to think on your feet. It trains you how to describe something that you don't know what's going to happen and what you're going to see, but you're just describing it. It can help you work on your vocabulary, your diction, your pacing, your inflections, all those different things that you use during a sports broadcast, you can practice. So you can practice while you're driving. And these days, people won't look at you funny because they think you're on your cell phone. Back in the 20 years ago, when we would do this, it would it would be even more funny because you're at a stop sign or a stoplight and the person next to you looks at you and you're doing play-by-play of what you're seeing. And again, they think you've lost it. But nowadays, everybody has cell phones. So you see somebody talking to themselves in a car, it's not that big of a deal. So the number one way to, to improve, we talked about networking. Number two, we talked about practicing your skills. And we're going to get to number three in just a minute. When you're done with this episode, or even if you want to open your browser now, you can go deeper and learn the secrets of sports broadcasting. Search our full list of books at sportscastersclub.com. Available from Amazon and Kindle, paperback and audible format.
All right, aspiring sportscasters, how can you improve right now during a lockout? You don't know if baseball is going to have a season. You don't know if opening day is going to come as it should. Nobody knows if spring training is going to begin in about 10 or 14 days as it is supposed to. But it's definitely a time that you can improve because if you're an aspiring broadcaster, you know what the competition is like. It's fierce. There are a hundred people going for that same job that you are. So how can you differentiate yourself? How can you become better every day? How can you not waste a day when you know of those hundred, some of them are improving today? So are you going to keep up? Are you going to excel? Are you going to outshine everyone else when your chance comes? You've got to improve. So the number three way to improve, we talked about networking. We talked about practicing your skills. The number three way that you can improve as a broadcaster right now in the face of a baseball lockout is by reading and learning. Reading and learning. And this was always one of my favorite things during the winter months, just because summer with baseball was busier. You have a game every day. You're preparing for the game. It's not uncommon for a baseball broadcaster to to prepare two or three hours for every hour they're actually broadcasting. So you may prepare a couple nights after a couple hours after that night's game. Then the next day you get up, you're preparing yourself, you're filling out your scorebook, you're getting to the ballpark hours in advance, talking to players, coaches, managers, physically preparing your broadcast booth, getting set for the action, going down, being with the team, being at batting practice. All those things take so much time during the day-to-day. But how can you prepare six months in advance? Well, reading and learning is a big one because you can always learn things that can translate and emerge in your broadcast during a season. What do I mean? Well, here's a perfect one. I mean, we're talking about a baseball lockout. You can read different books about work stoppages in the past. So then, when baseball eventually comes back, as it will, you'll be able to discuss this past year's work stoppage in relation to others. You'll be able to discuss some of the things that made this time different or similar to 1994 or others. And it can just make you sound like a much more seasoned, well-rounded broadcaster. So, for example, I can remember reading one of the best baseball books I've ever read, Lords of the Realm by John Hellyer. I can remember reading this book when it first came out. I had the hardcover copy in the early 90s, I think it was. And it was such a long, deep book, but fascinating. A lot of talk about work stoppages and owners and play. It wasn't all about that, but it gave me a really good foundation of Marvin Miller. And I then after that, I went and read Marvin Miller's autobiography. And it's funny because when I was teaching at Fordham and teaching at WFUV. I would often ask, and also I did this at Marist College when I was teaching there as well. I would ask students, how many of you know who Marvin Miller was? And hardly a hand would go up. Hardly a hand would go up. And so, and if you don't, if you're listening to this now and you don't know who Marvin Miller was, definitely someone who I think should be in the Baseball Hall of Fame. That might be a controversial statement, but do some research on Marvin Miller, a very influential person. And then that got us talking about Kurt Flood and his impact on baseball. Gosh, talk about a guy who never really got the credit for for what he did and what he meant to modern day athletics and modern day free agency and sports and the way things have changed. Kurt Flood, what a What a really historic figure. But if there you go. So you've got an hour of reading right there, right now. You can go look up Marvin Miller, Kurt Flood. You can certainly do a lot of reading online. But I always found books to be the best because I'm just a reader. So I'm somebody that reads books constantly about all kinds of things. And I think that's a great way to, to ingrain yourself with history. And specifically, we're talking about baseball history. So it's a chance to, to become better to know more. And so when you're an 18-year-old aspiring broadcaster and you're networking with someone, as we talked about a few minutes ago, 
and you're talking about the the work stoppage and you're able to to discuss certain facts and tidbits and things that happened 20 years ago, 40 years ago. All of a sudden they're going to look at you and say, "Now this this guy's different. This guy's done his homework. He's he has studied this topic." And it's going to immediately give you a leg up. So we talked about hundreds of people going for a job. It's probably more than that, going for that one single job. You want to do everything you can to give yourself an advantage. So reading and learning constantly is one of the things you can do right now. So these three things we talked about, you can do them right now to improve. So when the season comes, you're going to be better. So whether it's networking, whether it's practicing your skills, and whether it's reading and learning, start today, don't delay any longer. And when I come back, we're going to wrap this puppy up. If this is the year that you want to improve your sports broadcasting skills, then why not start your own podcast? It's simple and fun. We use Buzzsprout to host our podcast, and you can too. Simply click on the Buzzsprout link in today's episode notes. And if you have questions while you are creating your podcast, let us know. We'd like to help you. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. This is one that obviously we're doing during a a troubled time for Major League Baseball and professional sports. And if you're a professional broadcaster, you're feeling the pain. If you are an aspiring sportscaster, you're probably a little bit anxious and confused right now, not knowing what's going to happen with the Major League Baseball season. But... We touched on these three things you can do right now to improve. You can network, you can practice your skills, and you can read and learn. And we talk about these things as well as so much more at sportscastersclub.com. Hope you're over there. Hope you're connected with our community, whether it's our online course, our books, our live community where you meet and network and connect with other people professional broadcasters that's a great place to be too and you can find all that at sportscastersclub.com it's been great to be with you for another episode of the sportscasters club online radio show i am rick schultz thank you so much for joining us and we'll talk to you next time thanks for listening to the sportscasters club radio show at sportscastersclub.com Don't forget to subscribe so you will never miss an episode. And thanks for liking, sharing, posting reviews, and spreading the word.